Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Bonita from Pennies to Dollars. And today we are going to look at some cheap shortcuts in the kitchen that we can take. And as I have given the disclaimer before in my other videos, I may give you some tips and tricks that you will not hear anywhere else. It's because I was raised by depression era parents living in rural Kansas. I still live in many of the same ways that I was raised. So you will hear some different things on this channel that you may not hear everywhere else. Feel free to take and use whatever works for your family. I also have a 50 frugal recipes when cooking on a budget cookbook. The link's in the description box. It's available on Amazon and it has depression era recipes through the 1900s that my family has loved and used for many years. So today we're going to talk about shortcuts in the kitchen. I think we're all looking for some extra money somewhere in our budget. And with energy costs being more than they were last summer, it's hard to find any wiggle room. But food is a great place to find wiggle room. So often we are tempted to discard things or think, think that things are not usable because of those dates that are on the food, right? But many of them will say best buy. Now, before you click off this channel, let me show you one of the tips and tricks that I do. These are hamburger buns. And if you've ever bought Sarah Lee, you know these things do not mold quickly. I don't know if they have a lot of preservatives or something that prevents them from it, but it will say Best Buy. And these say Best Buy in May. We got these for Mother's Day weekend. They are not molded. They're absolutely fine. Now they may be a little drier, which is why you have that Best Buy date on there. But if you take these and you butter them and you toast them in a griddle on the stove like you would a grilled cheese, they soften right up and you toast them and they taste delicious. And you'll never know that the best buy date was before May. So these are some of the tips and tricks that we use. We don't toss things like this. Until I see mold, we don't toss them. And so I'm going to continue to use these. And since there's only two of us here and my husband is gluten free, that's why we still have hamburger buns because it's just me trying to use up some of these leftovers. But I have found that they make a really good breakfast sandwich. Now we get used to using English muffins, bagels, toast, wraps. We use other things for breakfast sandwiches. We don't think about hamburger buns because hamburger buns aren't really what you use for breakfast. They're what you use for sandwiches, lunch, dinner, Saturdays, cookouts, but not breakfast. I just want to tell you, if you use up those hamburger buns that you have no other use for, for a breakfast sandwich and you toast them, you will see what I mean. They make a fantastic breakfast sandwich and maybe you can forego buying those English muffins or bagels or wraps this week and use those up. Also, hot dog buns, same thing. You can toast them and add garlic, make them into garlic breadsticks to go with your spaghetti. You can use them the way I'm going to show you in this next clip to use up your leftovers as well. Here's an example of making your food stretch. We had not enough spaghetti sauce to feed everyone, but I had extra hot dog buns. So I just put the spaghetti sauce on there with mozzarella cheese and I'm going to bake until it melts. And no one knows that you were short on ingredients because they are not gonna complain about this meal. So don't feel bad about getting creative in your kitchen and using up those leftovers. Those hot dog buns would have also been good with chili on top, meatballs, all kinds of things you could have substituted for the spaghetti sauce I used to make those get used up and make your food stretch. The next tip is to use cheap Italian dressing as marinades. 
And I was able to get two of these at Dylan's this last week for a dollar each. Now that's cheaper than the Dollar Tree. They had a special where they were $1.49. One had a sticker on the front for a dollar off of two. So that made them about a dollar each. So you can use this on chicken, but our favorite thing to use it on is shrimp. We like to buy the large shrimp that has the shell. We take the bag, dump this inside with your shrimp, seal it back up with that Ziploc, put it in your fridge for 24 hours and let it get good and marinated and get those flavors in there. And then when you get home from work the next night, put it in a pan, cover it, and bake it till your shrimp is done. Now you could go out to all you can eat shrimp at Red Lobster right now, $20 a person. Or you could do this, throw in a baked potato and a vegetable, and both of you could eat for less than $12 and have a really restaurant quality meal. So this is one of my husband's cheap tricks. I didn't even like shrimp until I tried it this way. And I love it this way. This is my favorite way to eat shrimp. So if you have not tried this as a marinade on shrimp, I encourage you to do that. Remember, you can take those old towels, cut them up and use them as rags in the kitchen. Don't purchase rags or washcloths to use in your kitchen area or to use for your cleaning those old towels that get a little frayed or get strings or get holes in them don't toss those use those as rags we even will use them to wash cars in our yard they're great they're very thick which makes them an even better rag because they absorb better than some of the ones that you will purchase so another great kitchen hack there the next kitchen hack, I have a clip for you to show you how we are making our money stretch when we buy bacon. One of the things we have started doing since bacon costs so much is when we get a package, we just cut it right down the center. And it seems like you have twice as much bacon. So you can kind of fool yourself there. And then when you fry it up, it seems like it fries flatter and it doesn't twist. And so again, it seems like you have more bacon. And don't forget things like biscuits and gravy, just plain old biscuits and gravy. We had that as a supper lots of times when the kids were all young growing up. It's very inexpensive, it's good, it's filling. If you wanna add hamburger to it and make hamburger gravy, you could do that over biscuits, you could do it over toast, you could do it over mashed potatoes. You could also do sausage gravy if you're a sausage fan. It was a very inexpensive filling meal that I could throw together in a hurry when I came home from work. I have a couple more recipes here that I want to show you on how you can get creative in the kitchen and save money while cooking. When we have some items that need used up, I just tell my husband, we're making a new recipe. Tonight I had some squash and zucchini that needed used up and we're going to make a squash enchilada casserole. First of all, I cut up the squash and I sliced it thin and I'm going to make layers of that just like they are lasagna. We had some ground turkey that needed used up. So it's going to be ground turkey. It is a teaspoon of cumin, a teaspoon of paprika, onion, peppers, and about a cup of corn. And then I'm going to add some minced garlic and you know me, I needed black beans, so I'm making some dried black beans. And we're gonna mix this all together with some enchilada sauce and cheese and layer it all together. And I only have green enchilada sauce, so guess what? It's gonna be green enchilada sauce. And this recipe calls for two cans of enchilada sauce. All that's left is to add the black beans when they're done getting soft. And this is already smelling fantastic, guys. 
So here's our delicious mixture. We're just gonna layer it on top of our squash. I just added the rest of the squash on top for another layer, and then I'm going to add about a cup and a half of cheese. And then we're just going to let it bake until the squash is done and enjoy. It smells delicious. I just wanted to share with you my delicious brunch for today. Pancakes and berries and whipped topping. I love this and it's much cheaper to do it this way than to go to a restaurant plus you get way more berries. And my new favorite is using the Country Croc Plant Cream. I started using this because it costs so much less than regular heavy cream and I found a way to make whipped topping. You just use one cup of this a teaspoon or two of vanilla, a quarter of a cup of powdered sugar, and then you just whip it and turn it into whipped topping. I store this in my refrigerator. It's good for a couple, three days, and I haven't tried freezing it yet, but my last coupon, I got $2 off, which made this $1.99. So yeah, you can get some great deals just trying a few different things like this. So thank you for watching today. I hope this has inspired you to get creative in the kitchen, to save some money in areas that you can use it somewhere else. And remember, your dryer heats up your home. So if there's any way you can dry your clothes outside or on a drying rack to keep from heating up your home this summer, that too will save you money, not only from not using the dryer, but from not heating up your home. Remember when you cut expenses and live frugally, it will help you stay motivated on your goals and the things that you want to accomplish and you will see results in your checkbook. Thanks for watching today and I hope to see you in the next video.